Yo, we good. Sorry about that. I seem to do that about every five to six streams. My bad. Humble Among Broadcast System, number 43, is live now. <laughs> um, we have audio. As you can see, I'm joined by my special guest, Emily, here, who's going to keep up with the chat a little bit. She's going to help me uh, stay on top of the chat because I seem to be leaving y'all in the dust accidentally in the chat. Um, but I was explaining that my laptop is acting really shitty lately. Um, it took forever for it to load uh, uh, OBS today. It also took a long time for it to even let me go on to restream to set up the titles and all that stuff. I don't know what's going on with the damn thing, but I got to do something about this because it's infuriating. Bartle, um, I'm sorry you're a little manic today, dude. Um, I hope I hope you're uh, you're feeling better, man. There's those silky smooth pipes we love. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna um I'm gonna do the share gimmick right now. Uh, shouts out to Tulip. Who is with me this is going to be a little bit of a different stream same general content but i'm going to be joined by emily this time and be bouncing some thoughts off of emily and she's going to bring stuff to my attention that's in the chat i'm also joined by a special guest tulip because we are in the living room today where i usually do the wrestling watch along streams cats are also in here so you'll be seeing cats throughout the stream so right now i'm on facebook and i'm going to write live now on youtube join us <laughs> link and comment area section see this is how you keep the algorithm on the toes you see you got to do that weird shit now if you would if you wouldn't mind i'd love it if you did the same thing that i'm doing right now and went to your facebook and you shared the link you hit that share button and you copy that and then you share it so that's what i just did um I'm going to wait to actually fuck it. I'm going to put it in my stories that we are live now. Uh, Ooh, Marion, Ohio. Picture? I think that's close to Cambridge. Say what? Bye, guys. Command from Marion, Ohio. Marion, Ohio. Stephen Contrell, Marion, Ohio. Clockwork E, my homies. Shouts out to Clockwork E. Those are the homies. Um, what happened to the cool picture we took? Is it that one? Oh, yeah, I guess it is that one. Yeah. Um, we are live now. Link in bio. And I'll post the actual gimmick. I designed the, uh, the thing later there. All right. Yeah, the thumbnail. I got to do go to... The Canva gimmick and actually put that there. <sighs> Bizarre Seventeen got the Ouija VIP at four p.m. Yeah, that's Yo, shouts out to anybody getting that VIP. Hopefully, Ouija does not flip over his part this year. I know Onstead got the bone last year. Onstead was the motherfucker who was literally about to go next before Ouija flipped his cart, and Onstead, you know, Ouija flipped his cart, so Ouija didn't get to whip Onstead around uh, the gathering grounds at all. Hopefully Onstead gets extra extra time uh, in the golf cart this year, if he does the VIP this year. Um, okay. Oh yeah, Twitter. I gotta do Twitter. The water. Mm -mm -mm. Let's Luigi's do... the helicopter this year. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Bartle, I love it. Uh, we do backyard wrestling to PWA hardcore on YouTube. Shouts out. Oh, God damn. You beat me home for the stream fucker. What's up to gather.network. Shouts out to Stony low in the motherfucking building. Um, hoping he does the cart again. And I hope hex is there too. Hex is definitely there. Um, I don't think hex has hex been officially announced. He's definitely at the gathering, right? He was in, he was announced, I believe. Right. We have a lot of announcements that have come out in the last uh, week or so. We're going to be getting to all of those three waves of gathering announcements with nine artists slash groups in total. Um, I wonder if that's the set pale face. I wonder if one of us is the one who painted the pretty face thing. Who's pale face? One of us. What's up, pale face? It's got to be me, right? I, I think Isa Def is talking about me. I thought I was a stupid lighting. 
next was announcing Ishan. That's right. That makes sense. Thank you, Complex Mothra. Always coming with the knowledge. Yeah, I think that Isham... Yeah, that must be the first wave that I haven't talked about on here yet. We will get to that, though. Um, all right. Still sharing links, guys. I'm very, <laughs> very slow with this. All right. I just shared it on Twitter. I'm going to put it in my Discord now. All right. Live now. All right. If you could share this link to anybody, anywhere, anytime, any place, I'd really appreciate it. Um, if you would like to join the Discord, the Humble Among Discord, hit me up or one of the like-minded individuals, and we will give you the link. Uh, Humble Among is on all social medias as at Humble Among. Any of those social medias that I just shared that link to, you can follow me at Humble Among on those social medias. Um... Mikey Clark and Mushroom Head asked, announced today. That's why I'm wearing my Mikey Clark shirt. I'm very excited that Mikey Clark uh, will be returning to the Gathering of the Juggalos. I'm going to talk a little bit about that at the end of the broadcast system. But first of all, I have to open up the notes. We are going to jump right into the notes. Um, I have to say rest in peace to my uncle David, David Bray, who passed away um, last week. Uh, weird day where I uh, ended up leaving work early, had a weird feeling, left work early, and uh, we ended up getting a lot of stuff done um, that needed to get done, me and Emily. Um, but while we were out doing errands, basically, just stuff that needed to get done, I got a phone call that my Uncle David, or a text, really, that my Uncle David had passed away. Now, I only bring that up to you here on the Humble Among broadcast system because Uncle David has been in the chat on this shit before he he actually came in here on multiple humble among broadcast systems and was interacting with y'all in the chat so rest in peace to my uncle david that was a good man um i have a lot of really good memories of uh, uh thanksgiving dinners at his house he was more uh one of the more rich of the braves not rich rich but had a little bit more money he had an in-ground pool so I, I have all these memories of being in south carolina and Pauly's island where he lived and uh Swimming in his in-ground pool and fucking, yeah, good memories of Uncle David. Rest in peace to Uncle David. I thought it was so cool. To my knowledge, Uncle David, I think maybe one of my cousins, I think I think Greg, I think my, my cousin Greg, are the only uh, members of my family to ever tune in to the Humble Among broadcast system, um, which really shows you how much my family fucks with what I do. <laughs> but... <laughs> Thank you, Static Mob. Much appreciated. I'm gonna get your um, uh, your your uh, merch out um tomorrow, homie. I've been uh, a little swamped today. I'm gonna package up your shit and get your merch out tomorrow. Thank you very much to Static Mob Records, aka Zebo Zebao. Not quite sure how to say that for the uh the merch purchase. Um, if you guys are looking for t-shirts, CDs, and shit, hit me up. Um, I will show you what I have in stock. I will tell you what I have in stock. Multiple CDs, multiple shirts at this point. We're doing a pre-order for another shirt. Hit me up for that. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about a music video I shot last week um, with the homie Kasuke. Um, was that the same day that yeah, Uncle was. David passed? Yeah, yeah we, got, we got a lot of stuff done that day. That was a weird day. Um, Shouts out to Kasuke. He's got a new project called Terry Funk. Uh, spelled uh, P-H-O-N-K, Terry Funk, coming out soon. Really dope. He played the whole thing for us um, one of the last times we hung out. Uh, he's doing the finishing touches on it. He's waiting for a few more features, and that shit's dropping. But uh, go check out the, uh, I think it is the first single, technically from Terry Funk, Riding Into Tank, out now. Music video uh, shot by Humble Among, uh, edited by Kosuke. Uh, fun, fun little music video and fun fact, probably the last music video shot on this dinosaur. Now I, I've been talking to you guys a little bit. This is the phone. This is the notes phone. This is the, uh, this is the iPhone that I've had for four years. It shot not only Shimmer Forest, but the carnival last year. I shot it on this motherfucker, on this iPhone and a bunch of music videos, a bunch of my YouTube content has been shot on this iPhone. This iPhone will probably still be used for things, but I got a new boy. This will be used to shoot the new Gathering documentary. That's right, I am shooting on an iPhone. Sue me. 
But it's the iPhone 17. We 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 kind of bunny hopped a few of the uh, the models. <laughs> so thank you. Um, it's the iPhone 17, and uh, yeah, we're shooting uh, the 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 gathering doc, the carnival part two. I don't know what I'm going to call it this year. The gathering of dreams. I, I'm not really sure what I'm going to call it. Um, but uh, that that all depends on how the the gathering goes for me and how the movie plays itself out. But I will be shooting on that. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. If you guys would like to contribute a donation to help me pay for that iPhone, that would be much appreciated, but I ain't here begging for nothing. But just figured I'd throw that out there and let you guys know that I am taking money that you guys do give me, and I am trying to upgrade this channel a little bit. I'm trying to do little things to make this channel a little bit better. So um, super, chats. super chats would be appreciated. Uh, you can do like, uh, sticker, super stickers, all kinds of weird shits. It's a lot easier to keep up with the chat and see the important stuff and see your super chatting. I will definitely pay attention to your super chats. Um, but, uh, the best way, if you would like to donate, is to straight up donate to me directly. Right now, if you look underneath, you can see PayPal, at, uh, HumbleAmong at Gmail, Cash App, Cash Tag, HumbleAmong, literally scrolling right below my dumb head right now. Um, if you would like to buy merch, and actually get something for your donation. That's fantastic. I will send you CDs for $10. Um, 17 ship <laughs> if you're just buying CDs. If you buy a shirt and a CD, it's $10 a CD, though. Anyway, enough promo of my bullshit. Um, but I want to let you guys know, because I am excited that we're going to be shooting the Gathering Doc on a new iPhone. Um, with Call it Dreaming at the Gathering. I thought on that title for a video... Um, on Mike at the Gathering, but that won't come till a few weeks, taking a mental health break for two weeks. Shouts out to Little Ninja, hope you're doing well, homie. Uh, Among, would you pinch the weed or pinch your girl's butt? Pinch my girl's butt. Um, let's see, I share the countdown every day, fam. Hey, shouts out to Woody Woo doing the countdown uh, 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 images there. Odd Squad is fire. Odd Squad, one of the announcements um, from today. We're going to get to those a little bit later. Oh, I have one more thing I wanted to promo. I wanted to promo my homie Odious. Put out a song called Be Yourself. You know, me, Odious, and Koske have a few joints together. I think I forgot to promote it last time. Wanted to make sure I mentioned that this time. Oh, god damn it. I'm still promoting Humble Among Shit. Really got to promote this. Next Saturday, there's a show we, me and Koske will be doing called Nails Fest. Nails Fest is um, a memorial show, a Juggalo memorial show to Kyle Nels Fletcher, who is the best friend and hype man of uh, Casket the Monster, um, owner, CEO of uh, NEK Records, NEK Entertainment. I'm not sure what exactly they would call themselves. Uh, a collective of artists <clears throat> out of New Hampshire, Raymond, New Hampshire. If you want to come and see that show, it's free. If you are in the New England area, you better pull up because it's going to be a hell of a juggalo party um, for free. Um, at this point, there's nothing to worry about but parking because there's going to be mad juggalos up in that shit. Um, I'm rolling with a pretty healthy crew myself. We're, we're bringing a good amount of people out there. Uh, so you better pull up if you want to hang out and have a good fucking time before the gathering. It's free. If you are in New England and you want to get off some gathering vibes and uh, see some juggalo artists, there's going to be a... Quite a grip of Juggalo artists, including myself and Koske, and the entire NEK roster. Uh, Casket the Monster, Ermac, um, Payne, motherfucking GG the Snowman, a.k.a. Uh, 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 not Gino Cole, <laughs> Genocide Gino. Um, come out. Um, it's going to be a fucking good show. You're not going to want to miss that shit. Uh, let's see. Oh, Bartle Boss says that they got Odd Squad for an interview. Um, Hell yeah, that's fucking dope. Go to uh, Bartle Boss and the Dead Guys, uh, subscribe over there. Looks like they have an interview with the Odd Squad coming up. If you would like to learn more about Odd Squad, um, yo, let us know when that date is, Bartle Boss. Um, like Woody Woo just said, when's the interview? I would like to know. I have the wrong phone in my hand. How does that tell you? Oh, is it 420? All right, we're going to do something a little different. We're, um, <laughs> we're going to smoke on the stream. Which isn't uh, something that I usually do on Humble Among Broadcast System. Still always on wrestling We always do it on the wrestling streams, though. Um, assistant, will you um, please pack this bowl? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. 
All right. Now, that show is this Saturday in Raymond, New Hampshire, Nails Fest. You want to come out to that if you want to see a Juggalo show. Um... Now we're gonna we're gonna dive into the non humble among bullshit because we just spent goddamn seventeen minutes on humble among bullshit. Seventeen minutes, can you believe it? Yeah, we passing it to over to you. Oh yeah. Aren't you in England? Jimmy, po- is Jimmy Pockets in England? I think Jimmy Pockets is in England. That's passing right. We're we're passing it across the Atlantic Ocean through the internet to you, Jimmy Pockets. We got Tulip in the place to be. International smoke circle, indeed. Medicaid responsibly humble. Always Mr. Woody. Always Mr. Woody will. Okay. Now, I want to give you guys some entertainment news. We're going to jump into some entertainment, um, various forms of entertainment news before we get into some juggalo shit. Things that interest me. By the way, if you guys haven't picked up yet what the Humble Among Broadcast System is, I kind of let the cat out of the bag in the description of this video. Humble Among Broadcast System is strictly things that I am into. Things that I like. I'm just telling you things that I like. That's all I'm doing on this show. And I really fuck with you guys for fucking with it. Because it's if you fuck with this show, that means you're like me. So that that pleases my fucking ego. It makes my head three <laughs> times the size that it already is. It's a big fucking head. <laughs> big dumb crew. Okay. So Texas Chainsaw Massacre has a video com- game coming out. And a trailer has been dropped. So if you guys are curious what the gameplay... It's going to look at like on the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game. <laughs> I don't I don't know if there's a release date for that yet. <laughs> Go check that out. It looks to be like a survival horror game. I did not watch the trailer, but I did see a still of a girl hiding in the uh, Sawyer house. It looked like uh, in the living room area with all the bird uh, 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 bones. Uh... How do you know that? Stony, you're grounded. Stony. Don't throw my business out there in the chat like that. <laughs> That's not cool, man. Mikey Clark is going to play the Gathering Suite. Yes, he was announced today. Mikey Clark working with Psychopathic again. I almost titled this video, Mikey Clark is working with Psychopathic again, but I didn't want to give you guys a clickbait title. I wanted to give you a more accurate title um, because he's just, take, he's just taking a bag from Psychopathic. It doesn't mean he's necessarily working with them. But to me, he's working with Psychopathic again. I'm really fucking excited. Hopefully this means... Let's do some speculation. I want to talk a little bit about Mikey Clark. Let's do some speculation shit right now while it's in my brain. Um, Hopefully this means the mystery seminar announcement. That's right. That's right. Have you guys thought about this? Hopefully that means the mystery seminar announcement is ICP is working with Mikey Clark for the sixth Joker's card. The thing that never happened the first time around. Maybe it happens this time. Huh? You guys like that? Is that some fun speculation for your ass? Now, I will let you other Juggalo podcasts, I will allow you to steal that and act like it's your speculation. I will allow you to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stealing. Cheese House. Hey, what's up, Cheese House? I really fuck with motherfuckers who watch me at work, like Alric um, and Cheese House here right now, um, because I do the same thing. I watch podcasts at work all day. So that I love that people do that to me. That makes me really fucking happy. So uh, shouts out to the motherfuckers who watch this shit at work. Okay. So that was some fun speculation on Mikey Clark. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about a new TV show, a new limited series I saw teased this week. Now there's a fella I'm a big fan of called Nathan Fielder. Nathan Fielder has uh, a show that he did on Comedy Central called Nathan For You. It's one of my favorite TV shows of all time, straight up. I love that show. He basically goes and fucks with small businesses. If you guys have ever seen the meme Dumb Starbucks from like shit 10 years ago, he's behind Dumb Starbucks, that whole that whole thing. That was that was Nathan. <laughs> it's an episode of his show. Go watch um go watch uh Nathan For You if you've never seen it before and he also produced a show called uh, um, How To with uh, John, John Oliver, I believe, right? Is that the fellow's name? How To with John Oliver? I'm going to look that up real quick. I don't know. That weird show of the dude in New York who just like films shit. Oh. You remember that? Yeah, I showed John yeah, Wilson. Yeah, How To yeah, with yeah. John Wilson. Um, 
that's on HBO. That's produced by Nathan Fielder. Now, I only bring that up to bring up this new project that's going to also be on HBO. He's teasing a project called The Rehearsal. And uh, it looks to be like he's rehearsing like a, a, a married life, family life. He's In the teaser, he's sitting at a table with like essentially crash test dummies of some kind. And uh, it looks really fucking interesting. I'm a huge fan of Nathan. I can't, I don't know anything about the show other than that. I just am bringing it to you because, once again, I'm excited about it. And I want to give you guys fresh shit to, uh, to watch. So, yeah, check out Nathan for you if you've never seen it before. And also check out How To with John Wilson. Both of those shows are in fucking credible to me. Um, let's talk about Nope. Uh, Jordan... Uh, Jordan... Uh, Jordan Peele's new movie coming out July 22nd. Final trailer has come out for that. I've kind of been avoiding trailers for this. I've almost watched this final trailer a couple of times. I don't know if I want to watch it at this point because I don't want I don't want to know anymore because the way the first trailer came out, they didn't really show you anything. They left a lot of stuff in mystery and uh I thought that was really dope. So I want to uh I want to um, maybe experience it just with what I have so far and uh, go in with the mystery <laughs> um, still uh, intact. Um, but if you guys have never seen Jordan Peele's Get Out or Us, I love those horror movies. I know they get tagged as like artsy horror movies or woke horror movies. Fuck that bullshit. That's just good horror to me. Uh, good sci-fi horror in some ways. Um, and this looks to be more in the same vein. I, to me, it seems like there's some alien shit going on. I guess the new trailer sh sort of shows some of that stuff, which is why I'm kind of dodging it. Um, but yeah, check out um, me drinking an empty water container for the rest of the stream. Uh, hold on. Emily, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> stop bragging, Stoney. Yeah, Stoney, stop fucking bragging. We love Lady Gaga in this house. Lady Gaga will be a good ass Harley. Hey. Lady Gaga is going to be playing, might play Harley in Joker too. That was the that was the next thing on my list. Actually, <laughs> that's, that's so fucking funny. dope. Thank you. <laughs> thank that you. literally is the next thing on my list. Well, thank you, I will show you Dragon. to prove it. <laughs> I'm actually going to show you guys my notes here. You see that? Nope, final trailer, Joker Musical. Now you guys can see the next few things I'm going to talk about, too. Um, Joker Musical, apparently. The rumor is that Lady Gaga will be playing Harley Quinn. This is just rumor stuff, rumor mill stuff. But that it might be a musical. I don't know what the fuck to think of that. It's going to be like Sweeney Todd. <laughs> I mean, what, what? I don't know what the fuck to think of that. I kind of fuck with it because they could do it in a way where it's like, it's explained that it's a musical because they're fucking both insane. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Especially with the way Joker 1 is. Because to, to me, spoiler alert slightly, the ending of Joker, the first Joker, to me, indicates that maybe the whole movie happened inside dude's head. Um, and maybe didn't even happen at all. The the meat of the movie, if you will. Well, he dances a lot in that movie. He does. He does break out and dance, you yeah. know what I mean? And so, like, I can totally fucking see that. So that would be interesting. I'm open. To it. I don't think it's a whack idea just because it's a musical. I like musicals actually. So I'm open to it. I think it's a it's a crazy idea for sure, but maybe they need to just do some crazy shit with Joker. I I fuck with it. Um Okay. All right. I guess we're going to talk about Jeff Hardy. Um so Jeff Hardy got busted for his third DUI, blasted all over TMZ. I got I got to watch a little bit of that video. Uh, I shouldn't even say got to because I kind of felt embarrassed watching it for Jeff, and I felt like I shouldn't even have watched it after the fact. Jeff needs help. J Jeff, I hope uh, – obviously Jeff fucking Hardy ain't watching this. Jeff, I hope you get help, though. Um, But it makes me sad, man, because Jeff is clearly self-medicating some issues. Jeff maybe should retire. I think after Jeff gets clean, he should really think about doing a fucking final run. 
Uh, it's fucking sad, man. It really is sad to see Jeff uh, struggling like this. I hope he gets the help he needs. Um, now, in other wrestling news, though, this whole Vince McMahon thing that has evolved to be so bizarre, this bizarre-ass story of Vince McMahon apparently paying $3 million, uh, some sort of fucking settlement to a former employee, some hush money to uh, a former employee, and it has come out since that is maybe a lover that he was sharing with John Laurinaitis. Is that what I'm getting from this? This shit is crazy. Vince has stepped down as CEO, um, but is apparently still going to be holding the, a lot of the creative reins, which is, you know, I saw a meme like there couldn't have been a, a bigger fuck you to the wrestling fandom than uh, Vince stepping down as CEO, but still being creative. Um, I agree with that meme a lot. What a fuck you. Uh, but what the fuck is Vince up to? Uh, I, I Emily was telling me she saw Ryback. Um, yeah, it was tweeting shit about how he got a a payout too for his lawsuit. To me, I'm I'm just like, is Ryback such a meathead that he doesn't understand the difference between like hush money, like illegal hush money, and like uh, a, a settlement? Is he is he that big of a meathead? The answer I think is yes. I think Ryback is that big of a meathead. Um, but yeah, what a weird. What a weird story. And that that thing where Vince came out on SmackDown, I, I saw the video of Vince coming out and basically being like, well, I used those four words at the beginning of WWE. It's just uh, then, now, forever, and most importantly, together. Thank you very much. And he got out of the ring. I don't know what the fuck that was like, what, what message he was trying to send with that shit. Clearly that he's not going anywhere uh to me though um but i feel like there's another message he was maybe trying to send with that shit that's maybe lost on us or he just chickened the fuck out i don't know um more wrestling news vampiro showed up to uh triple a's triple mania uh this past weekend i think this happened on sunday and uh motherfucking came out wearing a jack jekyll shirt uh the new the new bloodstained boy which let me just speculate a little bit. I wanted to bring this up on the stream a few times. I haven't yet. Why do you think you get why do you, why do you think ICP is doing these like bloodstained prints of the Joker cards? The fu the first uh it's all the first deck by the way. They got these bloodstained prints. Why do you guys think that is? I have an idea of why I think it is. Um boy, this might get me in trouble, but fuck it. Um I think that ICP sold the t-shirt rights to all of their Joker card images to Merch Now in that big uh, ICP uh, Hatchet Gear merch purge. I think they maybe sold the image rights to some of their shirts, uh, the clean versions, to Merch Now, and maybe they don't own the right to necessarily print some of those Joker cards. And this is a workaround to put some blood underneath it because it's not the same. Purely speculation, of course, as a lot of things on the Humble Among broadcast system are. But I thought it was uh, it's something that's been in my uh, rattling around in my old head. Um, and a lot of this stuff, you know, a lot of the more juggalo shit on here is just stuff that rattles around in this damn head of mine. Um, I think Humble Among is correct. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, damn, that would suck ass. But not really, because ICP has just been selling that shit anyway on Psychopathic Vault. If you guys have paid attention, there's two merch sites run it you guys notice that you guys notice there's two merch sites um psychopathic vault is definitely a way for them to kind of legally get around things um and shouts out to the fucking them for always figuring out a way um it's one of the dopest things about psychopathic is they figure out a fucking way um let's see oh yeah i want to talk about this too so vampiro did come out with the new bloodstained uh jack jekyll shirt and uh, the announcer even shouted out Juggalo Nation. He said, uh, Vampiro looking to be representing Juggalo Nation with that shirt. So that's dope. Also, though, the announcers maybe were zooted the fuck up during this show. I saw a picture of the announcer's desk. I, I don't know what language. I assume maybe the, uh, the Spanish announcers. Um, and there was clearly cocaine lines <laughs> that had been cut on the desk. Uh, Right in the open, right next to homie's script. 
Um, I gotta say though, those are some sloppy lines. Like a lot of leftover coke. It looks like he like, was just very quickly throwing shit. Yeah. But I mean, you would have to do that, I guess, if you were announcing it. Like, oh, we gotta do one real quick. <laughs> Might as well just get you a little spoon, bro. Anyway, I wanted to share that because you might, depending on what language it is, uh, and what language you languages you know, you might want to watch that version of the uh, the Triple Mania show because uh, that motherfucker was zooted. Did you park the audio in the middle of the time when I was on Blaine Taylor? No, I did not. What did she say? Did she say anything juicy? She's uh Nyla. Nyla, by the way, is a juggalo, right? Nyla's the one that was trying to get ICP to show up uh, at AEW. Did she mention any clowny things, Jason V6? Mm, sorry, I'm in front of Emily. Sorry. Jason V6. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about this weird Lizzo thing. Lizzo censored her her own song this past week or a week and a half. They she said the word spaz. And like they said that she was being ableist. I think that's like taking a little a little too far. I, I agree. I I don't. But you know what? She here's what what I wanted to say about it though. She is the artist. She is self censoring. Yeah. If she wants to do it, yeah. I don't really understand why anyone has a problem with it. It is a little oversensitive in my opinion too. But she is the artist. It's not like she's being censored by the record label or anything. Um, it's it's reactionary. But it's it is her decision at the end of the day. So I don't know. It's not it's not that big of a deal. I don't think. It's definitely like a way of an overreaction to me though. It's, uh, it's spaz. I mean, Party. my dad had a dog named Spaz. Yeah. Party I mean. But then again, we had a cat named Blackie too. So maybe maybe that is uh, maybe yeah, it is it problematic. Black, was it a black cat? Was it just because he was a black cat? Yeah. Like, that's not like a black cat. That's like if I called. You a gray cat. Yeah, I guess it would be different if the cat's name was N word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just, I just don't get um, no more spasmatic. <laughs> Stony said, <laughs> spasmatic now problematic. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it's it's very overreactionary. Oh, let's talk about the new Drake album that I haven't heard. You heard it. What were you, you don't like it though? I think it sucks. I like rapping Drake. I like when he pretends to be a gangster because I think that's it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought that the, it was like trying to edge on like being like Spanish music with him singing, but he's not that great of a singer. It's just like very mm. monotone. It didn't get me hype. Typically, I fuck with Drake and his music makes me hype. I thought it was boring as fuck. I haven't heard it. I, I I bring it up though because I think I heard it was a dance album in one. I read it was a dance album in one of the tweets. And if that I went does to have the club curious. and I heard that boring ass music, I would be pissed. Not a Drake fan, I should also say. I I don't. I'm not that big of a Drake fan at all. I think Drake can come off as really mediocre, really corny. Um, I think "Started from the Bottom" is one of the most ridiculous songs ever. I think it's a good song, but the 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 artist who said he started from the let, let me just put it like this: Drake's bottom is a motherfucking uh, uh, is a condo, well, <laughs> is a condo in fucking Toronto, um, while he's struggling to get acting jobs. Yeah, he he got on. That's his bottom. Like, what, like 15, 16? Yeah. I mean, like, and he did good off of Degrassi. Like, people I mean, probably wouldn't have even known who Drake was when Drake came out if he didn't have Degrassi's coattails to ride on. But as a juggalo who was a uh, had some real struggles in life. I uh, yeah, fuck that shit. That's why I said um, pretend. Yeah, pretend. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, Kodak, uh, Kodak Black. <laughs> Kodak Black this past week was given a Donald Trump chain um, by uh, some fucking some jewelry company who was making him uh, uh, a sniper gang chain, and they made him a Donald Trump chain. Um, if you guys don't know, Kodak was pardoned by Mr. Trump. <laughs> so that's why Kodak rides for Trump so hard. But I just think that shit is funny. Not a Trump fan at all. Don't 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 get that shit twisted. I think it's fucking hilarious that he's got a Trump chain, though. Um, now we're gonna do something a little fun. The double XL freshman list came out. I have not looked at it. I've seen the image of the cover. I have no idea who's in it. I'm gonna look at it right now. I'm going to read the names to you guys right now of the freshman list. 
and we're gonna see how many of these names I know. This is a game I usually play by my by myself. By myself. I usually <laughs> shouts out to Fifty Cent. Um, by myself. <laughs> um, this is a game I usually play by myself, and um, I I I want to figure out how many um of these names I've heard of. Wow, I see a name already that sticks out that I have heard of for a specific reason. And this is Juggalo related now because of this one name I just saw. So stay tuned, non-mainstream rap fans. Um, Cochise. Never heard of him. Saucy Santana. <laughs> Never heard of him. Babyface Ray. No. Ken the Man. One word, by the way. No. Sofago. I have heard of Sofago. Um, so we're one so far. Big Scar. <laughs> Never heard of him. Big 30. Never heard of him. K Psy. I think that's how you say that. Never heard of him or sh her. I'm assuming some of y'all are female or don't have a gender. Is there, is there, has there ever been a non- a non-binary or a uh, gender fluid uh, member of the double XL freshman list. Something tells me no. Um, Dochi. Nope, don't know him. Callie. I don't. I don't know. That's such a general. By the way, that's such a general name. Callie with a K. Like um, California. That's a good question, Lonely Dragon. Is he? I love McConan. I, I fuck with I love McConan. Um, we got two more names though. Nordo Nardo Wick. Nope. And Babytron. I have heard of the name Babytron. By the way, I think Babytron, is that that motherfucker? Hold up. I think Babytron got a juggalo connection. Yeah, you guys. Babytron. Hold on. I think Babytron was at. Yeah, you guys. Babytron is the guy, um, let's see. Yeah, Babytron took a picture with Violent J. This is Babytron uh, when they did No Jumper with Violent J. Um, Babytron was in Violent J's house as a kid. So uh, what was the connection, though? Babytron's dad, Babytron's dad is someone connected to the Juggalo world. Drop it in the chat if, uh. ICP actually signed Babytron's dad at one point. I'll wait till the pod comes out to fill in the blanks, but that shit is crazy. Motown Rage. That's right. Babytron's dad is in Motown Rage. So that's fucking dope. Um, Bartle Boss, you're on the list, dog? So that's two That's two out of how, however many. Um, let's see. I'm going to go back. Let's count those names. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve names. I know two out of twelve. That's pretty bad. That's maybe one of the worst years. Um, as uh, I'm really showing my old headness uh, with that one. But uh, anyway, so kind of two Juggalo connections with this double XL <laughs> list. Someone named Sofago and motherfucking Babytron, whose father is Motown Rage, and I think Vinyl J essentially babysat this motherfucker as a kid. Um. All right. This is a story Emily actually tagged me in today. Corn is looking to talk to Fieldy again after they get off the tour. If you guys don't know, uh, Corn has sort of not let go of Fieldy, but they've been touring without Fieldy for the past year and some change after Fieldy decided to make some lifestyle changes of some kind. Uh, <coughs> he said he was looking, he was looking to find his happiness again, essentially. Um, and he had fallen back into some poor decisions, some poor habits they used to have, uh, basically hinting at some drug addiction uh, uh, or alcoholism type of issues that he struggled with in the past. Um, assuming he went to a rehab and has been working on that, and they're going to talk with him, uh, have a meeting with him. But they did say that they've been talking with him this whole time, and he's still the homie. He's still their friend. They love him. But it is weird. I talked about this uh, a few weeks back that they did, Corn did promo images 
um, without Fieldy, with the new bassist. Uh, they did a parody of um, yeah, the Backstreet Boys cover for Re Requiem promo image stuff. So, I, I don't know. Uh, I do want Fieldy back in the band. I've never seen Korn live, and when I do see them, I want Fieldy to be playing. Fieldy, to me, is an, an essential member of Korn, so I definitely want him in the band. Um, let's see. Your Mom's House. I've been watching a lot of Your Mom's House, and I wanted to bring you guys uh, episode 338. Um, if you're looking for them to talk about Juggalo shit, there's a, <laughs> there is a clip of a Juggalette um, from the Juggalo, uh, Juggalette beauty pageant documentary that Broadly did. Uh, several years back. So if you want to check out that documentary, look, uh, I, I don't know exactly what the title of, of it, but it is a, a Vice um, spinoff, if you will, called Broadly that did this documentary. And uh, it's about the Juggalo beauty pageant, essentially. And uh, a little bit, touches a little bit on the Let's Respect thing. But they follow this one Juggalette and uh, her attempts to win the Juggalo uh, uh, Juggalette beauty pageant. Interesting stuff. Uh, I, I find it fascinating when Tom and uh, Christina start talking about uh, Juggalo shit. So I'm, I'm going to keep telling you guys when they talk about Juggalo shit. If you guys didn't know, in one of the last, I think the last Humble Among broadcast system, I told you a little bit about them talking about Boy Blue, um, which the, Boy Blue ended up pissing them off, which I find <laughs> hilarious. <clears throat> um, Bam Margera went missing from rehab. I think he's since been found or oh, I, don't know. I think he's since kind of uh, shown his face again. Let me look that up, that update. But yeah, he escaped a court-ordered rehab center in Florida. I thought Margera was doing so well, too. Yeah, he made a year of sobriety. <clears throat> and then escaped. Found at Hotel Bar after leaving Florida Rehab oh, okay. Center. So he's been found, all right, but he definitely has relapsed. That's really unfortunate. Bam, I, another one I hope can get his stuff together. Um, I haven't found out why he wasn't on tour. Because... Yeah. Yeah, definitely lawsuits going on. They use Bam's ideas. So I don't know how much... Bam might have a point, because they use Bam's ideas in the movie. Um, there was a there was a part in Jackass 4 when we were in the theater, and I, I leaned over and I'm like, that's a Bam idea. I can just tell. It's one of those things he would draw. It's like the the, the, the super wedgy thing. I was like, that's a Bam idea, because that's the type of shit he would draw. I remember the punk faxing that idea over, yeah. and then printing it out and seeing that little drawing. Yeah, if, yeah. Uh, in one of the other Jackass yeah. movies, or a point five yeah. or something. I think it was a point .5. Yeah, I think the .5, they talk about how he likes to draw out these ideas. And I could tell that was one of them, because a lot of them are... Uh, in, I think the one in the movie is another wedgie thing, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, them jumping off the bridge, right? Yeah, that's an end scan. Yeah. So I, I knew that was a Bam idea. They used his ideas in the movie, um, so he might have some legs to stand on with that lawsuit, by the way. <laughs> um, Blue Ridge Rock Festival, that rock fest that ICP and Twisted are playing together. And, um, you know, uh, we now know what day ICP is playing. ICP confirmed is playing on Friday. They, were, they, released, they, they, released, they released a list of um, the artists and what days they were playing. At least the bigger artists were on this list. Twisted, unfortunately, did not make the cut <laughs> and were not listed with the bigger name artists. Twisted is con considered to be and many, many more. So we still don't know officially what day <laughs> Twisted is playing, but we know Insane Clown Posse is playing Friday. Twisted, uh, we do not know yet. Um, I just I only brought that up to very cheekily make fun of Twisted for not being on the flyer. Um there is some speculation going on in the Juggalo world <clears throat> that Dark Lotus will be reuniting yeah, but at Blue asked, Ridge Rock on, Festival. On the last podcast, one of the Super Chats asked if he would ever talk to Twisted, and Chad yeah. was like, no. Yeah, he's, he's not doing it. I, I wanted to touch on this because the, the chances of that happening are, it's not happening. The reason people think this, um, though, I wanted to explain, is because on some of the promotional materials... A lot of the promotional materials are, first of all, talking about reunions. There's several bands are reuniting for the for original lineups. All this, like all this kind of stuff, is going on at this festival. One of the things on the promotional materials is like one one reunion still unannounced, and for some reason, people think that's going to be Dark Lotus that is going to make that big reunion. It's not going to happen, guys. 
Sorry, I'm, I don't want to bur burst your bubble. That shit ain't not, is not happening. Like Emily said, Shaggy's been asked a couple of times now about this shit on the podcast. He's not very... And if it's any indication that Shaggy is... His reaction is like that, what do you think Jay's reaction is? Yeah, sorry he says no to his mask. Yeah, Jay's reaction is probably like, don't even fucking bring that shit up to me. <clears throat> All right. Let's continue. My note did that jump thing. Okay, Fago ice cream flavors. You guys have probably seen, or maybe not, maybe you haven't seen, that there is Fago ice cream flavors that are coming out. I am going to tell you about the flavors. <clears throat> now, the uh, the shit uh, is coming out from a brown dog barler and restaurant. Um in downtown Northville and downtown Farmington, Michigan. So Michigan heads, uh, head out to the motherfucking Brown Dog Barler and Restaurant if you want to cop some pints of this Fago ice cream. It comes in the following flavors. Chalk and rye. That's Fago rock and rye with ribbons of chocolate fudge and chunks of brownies. Motown jam. Fago red pop swirled with ribbons of chunky peanut butter. Citrus Mist, Fago Moon Mist, and Fago Orange with bits of Americino cherries. Peaches and Creme, Creme, uh, Fago Peach and Fago Creme. Soto, Soto, damn it. <laughs> Soda with shortbread cookies. Uh, groovy Grape, Fago Grape mixed with vanilla sandwich cookies. Mm. Unicorn, Unicorn Swirl, Fago Cotton Candy Pop with pink marshmallows. That's feels like that one's yours. Oh That's your my shit, right? god. So those are the flavors of the Fago ice cream. Uh brown dog bar what is it? Bar the fuck do they call it? Barler and restaurant. <laughs> From here. Yeah. Okay. Oh these notes just keep dumping. Okay, DJ Chunk has a single called Super Sick, which I think is out now. Um, I'm like two and a half hours away. What? What, from Ohio, though? From here, I just typed it in. Oh, let me see directions. Your location, Brown Dog Restaurant in Ipecam, Michigan. Wait, how is it only that far? It's not that close to Michigan. We're not that close to Michigan. What? Oh, it says Massachusetts. Oh, my bad. Mm. My bad. Mm. My bad. It's two hours from Massachusetts. <laughs> that said M-I, not M-A, not M-I. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, DJ Chunk, uh, that single Super Sick, I think is out now. Uh, I saw him promoting it, that it was coming soon. I think it might have dropped, though. Um, that's produced by Shaggy the Airhead. Shaggy the Airhead also is teasing his new project, Grin to the Grave, a new album with like, I think he said like 20-something rappers on that shit. 29 rappers, some ridiculous amount of rappers on that thing. Um, that pre-orders are going to be dropping maybe this Thursday, he said. Uh, purely speculation on that, of course. Um, I think, you know, I was going to tell you guys about Lazy and Crazy Mystery Bundles. I'm going to go ahead and tell you about that anyway in case he still has some of those. Shaggy the Airhead has been going back into his supplies, his old totes, if you will, and uh, pulling out old lazy and crazy shit from 2019, as far back as 2019. He's doing these mystery packs. Um, if you guys want to get some rare shit, this is your chance. Go to uh, the Lazy and Crazy website, lazyandcrazyclothing.com, I believe, and uh, cop some shit from the homie. Uh, lazy and Crazy Clothing is fresh. You should cop that shit. Can't wait for these fucking shorts that I uh, ordered to show up. Um, Darby O'Trill is on tour now, the Generations of Snuff tour. Go see Darby at a, a, a fucking day. I think, I don't know, I'm not sure what they're playing today because my computer is acting so funky. I couldn't even bring this shit up to show you if I wanted to. Um, but go look up on Darby's social medias. Um, he's playing, I think, a lot of Midwest uh, dates again. <coughs> also on tour right now. I think as of right now, or about to go on tour, is the motherfucking Ouija Mac. Uh, what is it? The Warlords. 
Wicked Warlords. That's what it's called. The Wicked Warlords tour is about to go on. Um, that's also West Coast, Midwest stuff. Um, not coming anywhere near me, unfortunately. Um, like barely into the Midwest. Yeah, you've got. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the uh, Wicked shit concerts. Not even coming close to touching the East Coast. Um, but if you want some Wicked shit flavor, they did announce some. Um, some artists for Lethal Weekend 5, which will be going down at Jewel Nightclub in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, Shaggy Tudo, Esham, Scum, Light, Gibby Stites, and Lloyd Banks. A lot of motherfucking artists will be at um, Lethal Weekend 5. Will I be playing Lethal Weekend 5? Probably not, but you never know. Um, I played last year. I think I might be passing this year. All due respect to Fury. Um... Big Hoodoo, speaking of light, being on Lethal Weekend, Big Hoodoo was on that Lights Out show, Lights Out 5 that I was telling you guys about last time. And I was I was talking about how weird it is to me that Hoodoo is on that. Because I was like, did Hoodoo get off of the goddamn Nightmare stage? And then if you guys were watching, I went and I checked the Nightmare stage in the middle of the stream to see if he got taken off that shit. And I was like, no, he's still on. So that's fresh that it's so many of these artists working together because there's a lot of m e people a lot of psychopathic people well i guess light and uh, big hoodoo being the only ones and i speculated maybe light will be at the gathering then damn because i in my in my mind light wasn't going to be at the gathering because of all the working with m e artist shit now big hoodoo is not on the lights out show he got taken off the show one way or the other if he took himself off or he was tapped Hey, you play what? Well, yeah, I don't know if he got the ultimatum. I've heard I've heard stories of the ultimatum before. I don't know, purely speculation, but he's off the show nonetheless, and he's been replaced by Dayton Family. I have heard that it's not even a full Dayton Family show; that it's just going to be shoestring up in that bitch. Garby's Gully album is fire. This is hard facts. Gather Network. <laughs> yeah, you should see some older stuff poking out. Lazy and crazy, yes. <clears throat> okay. Ouija Max stuff. I'm going to tell you guys about some interesting Ouija Max stuff that happened. I'm going to do a little bit of speculation and talk about one of these things. But first of all, Ouija made a post about still win, stale win and killing himself. Now, I almost made a video about this, but I saw that there was a couple of other Juggalo YouTubers um that had already kind of made videos about it so i didn't want to retread some shit but i do want to talk about it because i have some interesting takes on it that i wanted to share with you first of all i'm going to read let me find the actual post here oh dear god did i delete the post oh my god i think i deleted it oh my god. how did i do that did you send it to me I don't think I did. How did I delete that? Probably didn't get shown your end. Mm, boy, that's annoying. Hold on, let me go into uh my deleted videos. Recently deleted. Yo, what? Screenshot? Yeah, thank you. Hmm. Hold on, I'm going to try to find this on Twitter because I really, really wanted to read that to you guys. I'm going to scroll a little bit to find that, though. Because this is really interesting stuff here. Because he talked a little bit, not only about Still Wind and Stale Wind and the original plan, which was apparently going to be killing himself. Okay. All right, here we go. Many people are upset because the final element was hinted to be still wind. And now it's stale wind. And I think I should explain why. The elements, by the way, thank you, Mayhem's Mommy, for the $1 super chat. Much appreciated. Um, 
Let me, ex I think I should explain why. And then he has number one, the elements come from dreams and my interpretation of experiences in dreams, astral projection and remote viewing. It's not always clear. Now, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about astral projection and remote viewing, because I don't know if many people have talked at all about that aspect of this post and that Ouija has said in this post, that's where his creative process is coming from. <clears throat> if you guys don't know astral projection and remote viewing, which are both sort of connected to each other, astral projection is the idea that you can get yourself into a meditative state to the point where you can leave your own body and you can go wherever you want. You can go to space, you can go inside the earth, you can go in the ocean, you can go where, where if you can think it, you can go there and you can go there instantly if you're really good at this remote, remote viewing shit. Now, if you think this sounds crazy, the United States government actually ha has spent time studying this for uh, um, spy reasons, for, you know, uh, military intelligence reasons, if you will. Um, this sounds crazy, but it kind of works. And if you hear some of the stories about it, some of it is remarkably accurate. Um, now, he says uh, astral projection and remote viewing. Remote viewing is more what the United States government was using it for. They were using it for remote viewing, which is the idea that you can see a place. And they, they were basically like going inside of bases and being like, what do you see inside that base and shit? Now, Ouija is saying that he's doing that with his dreams, but maybe not just dreams because just, it doesn't just happen in dreams. From what I understand, it's a meditative state you get yourself into. So this is super interesting to me. I'd love to talk to Ouija about this shit. Um, but he says it's not always clear. Now, here's the second tweet. Two, when I started this album saga, I planned to kill myself after Still Win. That's still, like, it's still, everything's done. You know what I mean? <laughs> and leave instructions for the posthumous release of Dark Planet. It wasn't until more recently that I chose life which was the catalyst for the still stale shift. And then num number three, man, I'm sorry I'm stale, which I knew when stale wind, but as soon as I heard stale wind, and I, I was speculating that it was stale wind, I told you guys why it would be fresh if it was stale wind, and that's because I'm so sorry that I'm so stale. That you, the staleness. um, The whole fresh and stale shit in the Juggalo uh, um, vernacular. That shit's dope. It's really fucking dope that Ouija is going to be around and not going to kill himself. <laughs> um, it really fucks with me that that dude was seriously thinking about taking himself out before the last project was going to be dropped. Now, obviously, it's not going to be a last project. Hopefully, I would assume Ouija keeps going after Dark Planet um, because he chose life. And we're going to get more material from this, frankly, in my opinion, brilliant fucking rap artist one of my favorites if not my favorite rapper um currently like around doing shit Ouija might be straight up my favorite rapper well wait violent jet yeah it's violent jet but Ouija's number two with a bullet um definitely uh definitely number two i love Ouija mac to death i'm so glad he stayed with us to give us more art to give us more creative output um I think that's all I had to say about that. I really wanted to talk to you guys about the astral projection stuff of it, though. Because that's fucking, that's some weird shit that he's doing. Um, I would love to talk more about that, about what he sees, where he goes. Um, yeah, I would love to ask some questions. Ouija, if you're watching this, please let me interview you. I want to interview you so bad. Let me interview at the gathering. Fuck, I want to interview that motherfucker. Okay. Ouija Mac. Talking about this still wind, stale wind. It's stale wind, by the way. I told you. I told you I was right. <laughs> I'm gonna keep I'm gonna be like for years for years and years. I'm gonna be like, I told him it was stale wind. It'd be like, what are you even talking about, dude? Like no one will even remember. I'm like, yeah, I told him it was stale wind. Um the stale wind pre-orders are up now. Uh Ouijimaxshop.com. Go to go to go there, get the stale wind pre pre orders. I'm probably gonna get that five pack gimmick and do another giveaway. Um so Make sure you leave a funny comment on this video because that's how I'm judging these giveaways. I'm, I'm giving away three copies to the funniest comments that I see. So leave something funny for me, please. Um, 
Not in the chat, by the way. I'm not counting the chat. You got to leave it in the comments of the actual video. And by the way, like this video if you haven't already. Um, Ouija is now my favorite artist. That's what's up. Love Humble Among. Glad to see so many people watching live on a Monday afternoon. Me too. Um, I have to do these kind of uh, when I can because I'm a busy motherfucker. And uh, I'm squeezing one in. I wanted to do one yesterday, but I, I honestly just never got to that shit because we ended up doing a lot of shit yesterday too. And I just wanted to veg after we were finally done with that shit. <clears throat> um, United States of Insanity. If you guys haven't seen it yet, you can see it now for free on Tubi. Um, the little movie app Tubi uh, apparently is streaming on there for free. So if you guys want to watch United States of Insanity for free on the app, Tubi. Um, Tom Woods art contestants have been announced for the gathering, uh, the art contest. I'm not going to read you the whole name. There's like 20 names on that shit. I'm not going to read you all the names for that shit, but congratulations. If you're an artist in the, uh, the, uh, the art contest, um, uh, good luck. <clears throat> More gathering on our artists announced. Now here's the juicy shit you guys have probably been waiting for. Did I say announcements? The gathering announcements are here. So they have done three waves with three artists each. Um, and I'm going to talk to you guys about all of them. And uh, some of the reactions to some of them, because I've seen various reactions, mixed reactions to especially the first two waves, which I don't get that. I don't get I don't get it. Uh, some of the reactions, but we'll get to that. So. The first wave included Esham, Hex, and Scythe Gang 666. And I'm going to read you the post um, about, uh, I think this is from Facebook, about the artist. I'm not going to go to the website and read each artist because, like I said, my computer is acting like a piece of shit right now. And I'm not going to be able to do that without being frustrated. And I don't want to waste time. <clears throat> when a dream is eclipsed by the dark side of the subconsciousness, it descends into a nightmare. As the gathering nears, the eldritch tentacles of the dark carnival are creeping toward you. Ready to warp your mind with the wicked shit. The first deadly vision we have for you is the extreme trap terror trope, Scythe Gang 666. While keeping it West Coast wicked, bleeding from the page... Oh, this is, I guess, uh, this is Hex's announcement now. While keeping it West Coast wicked, bleeding from the pages of Chapter 17, we present to you Hex. Finally, the moon shows the image of the devil as caustic clouds threaten overhead from the acid rap style of Detroit, murderous's very own Esham. Now, let me finish this and then we'll talk about it. Uh, for decades now, the gathering has owned the dark sounds of the underground, and this year we celebrate the fact that the fact that fact with fiendish glee. Stay alert right here for what else might be lurking at the gathering of dreams and sure enough a couple of days later they did another announcement but let's talk about these three artists and group um isham first of all let's start with isham i'm fucking pumped that isham is going to be back for uh the gathering this year 2019 i saw him at, uh, at the super gathering my first gathering um he was playing with the band daytime set on the main stage Fucking, I loved it, man. Um, I filmed a little bit of it, but it was one of those situations where I was trying to film it because it was dope. But at the same time, I love Esham so much, I shut that camera off to make sure I got some good time just rocking out in the pits of that shit. Because I fucking, I love Esham, man. He's one of my biggest influences. One of the best to ever do it in the Wicked Shit. Godfather of the Wicked Shit. Very excited that Esham will be playing the Nightmare stage. Um, I don't know if all of these artists, no, definitely not. Because Hex, um... We will, we will talk about next. The first signing to Chapter 17 is playing the main stage. Congratulations to Hex. Making that leap to the fucking main stage. That's so dope. Look for Hex on the main stage. We don't know what days any of these artists are playing, by the way. We just know that they are playing. Like the, the whole Isham show. Are they an ocean? Uh, Isham and ICP have a bit of a mixed history. But it seems to me that he's going to show because... If you guys saw that Carnal Little Carnage stream, which I do have a clip on my channel, they um they seem rather like, you know, buddy buddy on that. I, I don't think it's gonna be an issue of Esham no showing. I think there may be more of an issue of someone else no showing, but we'll talk about that later. <coughs> um let's see. 
We talked about Hex on the main stage. And now Scythe Gang 666. I didn't know anything about them, that name. I had seen that name. I don't know much about them. Um, I listened to the songs on their Spotify. And honestly, my reaction is kind of like, meh. It's not horrible. It's not, I'm not saying it's trash. But I'm, it's not like blowing me away either. Um, what I said to Emily is I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I think I might fuck with it more if I see it live. But I'm I, I'm waiting to see them live to see um the vibes that they have in person. They have hardcore <clears throat> vibes. I um I think my for I think it feels a bit forced to me. I think that was my reaction. But um I'm not saying it's bad music by any any means. And um I try my hardest not to shit on any music because I do believe all art is subjective. So he said it's Hollywood, it's Hollywood and, and dead, dead from Wish. I think it's more broken. I saw that comment. I think it's more broken side yeah. from Wish. That's what you were saying Hollywood in the car. I think it's way like broken side from Wish, like hardcore scene kid vibes, like yeah. Which broken side has played the gathering, I believe. I I do believe broken side <laughs> played the gathering. <laughs> the next wave of announcements which happened a couple days after this first wave. The Executioners with Large Professor and the Future Kings to perform at the Gathering of Juggalos. Now, this is this announcement's a little uh, confusing because they, they, they did these as, in tiers of three, but it seems to me that Executioners will be performing with Large Professor. So it's a little confusing because they had them tiered out like three different acts. But anyway... <clears throat> Let me read this to you. We don't need the summer sun to bring that heat, Juggalos. We bring the party that is straight fire by bringing you three acts combined like a hip-hop Molotov. Oh, so this is all one thing. Is that what I'm taking away? Allow us to announce first the biggest DJ group of all time in New York City's own celebrated Sons of the Soundboard. DJ Precision and Boogie Blind, a.k.a. The Executioners. They're joined on stage and the decks to flex DJ skills better than the rest by the eminent, prominent rap game prifol- pro- proliferator. Proliferator. Proliferator? Proliferator. Boy, I can't say that word. <laughs> <coughs> Large professor. The stage is already packed with flavor like a Fago ice cream sundae, but we're giving it that fresh drizzle of sauce with a cherry on top by adding a full display of dance and rap ability by the viral sensation, the future kings. This year, we are attacking your sensory perception. Oh, shit, I got to get the, the cord for this. We are <laughs> attacking your sensory perception from every angle, ninjas. And by the time all is said and done, you'll have to call Elon Musk to retrieve your wig from orbit. Only at the Gathering of Dreams. Gathering, JuggaloGathering.com tickets. I love the Someone said they're seeing City Morgue August 8th in Cleveland. Cleveland. So they're going to be in Ohio that week. Oh, in between? I think I might have predicted them for the Jump steady day on here. And that is the second day? Yeah. I really hope we get them. They could do it. It's looking a little less likely, though, because they filled in another date in there. I think there was a two-day... Yeah, they um, sold out, so they put another date. Yep. So I'm really hoping... I'm really hoping we get that shit. Whoop, whoop. Welcome back, little ninja. Okay. All right, where was I with that? <clears throat> oh, so, like I was saying, it seems like all three of these acts are going to be one show. It seems like it's going to be Large Professor, The Executioners, and The Future Kings dancing. So it's going to be like a hip-hop spectacle. Oh, that's going to be dope. Yeah, that's going to be fucking awesome. <clears throat> um, I saw some hate going around for The Future Kings um, online. I don't get that, man. That's some old school hip hop flavor that they're going to be bringing to that shit. You old heads, I thought would like that. Is it just simply because they're young? Because if that's the case, that's even whacker. The fuck, man. Let these kids. This is going to be dope. Don't fucking hate on this. This is going to be really fresh. And by the way, definitely this feels like something on Shaggy Two Dope's day because it's very DJ 
very hip hop spectacle type of, you know, the, the, the elements all coming together type of shit. This is going to be dope. I would expect maybe some special guest MCs to come out and lace some shit too with a, a show like this. Um, don't hate on this. Don't sleep on this. I especially don't get why I see old heads hating on this because this is going to be some fresh shit. <laughs> um, now for today's announcements, Mikey Clark, Odd Squad Family, and Mushroom Head to perform at the Gathering of Dreams. Fuck what you heard. The family remains in effect. Today we show and prove by rolling out these down by law acts poised to pop off at the Gathering of Dreams. Each of these gathering vets holds a place of distinction in the hallowed halls of Patchet history. So let's kick it off right by welcoming the OG psychopathic mu musical savant, the legendary super producer Mike E. Clark, returning to the gathering of the Juggles for the first time in what, seven, eight years or some crazy shit? When was the last time Mike played the gathering? I think I've asked that on here before and I got an answer that I think that was like 2015 or something. Was it 2017? Either way, it's been a fucking minute since Mikey e. Clark has done anything psychopathic related. Like I said earlier, is this the, the doorway for Mikey e. Clark working with psychopathic again? Will the big seminar announcement, the mystery seminar announcement, the ICP mystery seminar, will it be with Mikey e. Clark? Will you get all three members of ICP reunited? Because back in the day, if you guys watched interviews from back in the day, they would call Mikey Clark the third member of ICP. Um, will we get the six Jokers card announced being produced by all Mikey Clark beats at the Gathering of Dreams? The thing that didn't happen in the last deck. Will it happen this deck? Shangri-La produced by Mikey Clark. The Wraith produced by Mikey Clark. How, what are they going to be calling this Jokers card anyway? They said it's going to be the same as the last deck. They're going to be doing a Wraith Shangri-La exhibit. No Hell's Pit, just Shangri-La. But what are they calling it? Are they calling it Shangri-La? Are they calling it the Wraith? I don't know. You tell me in the chat right now. <clears throat> anyway. Um, let's see. I think I interrupted myself here, didn't I? Next up, straight out the American Southwest are three dope MCs fixing to cut up the mic with their lyrical prowess. Y'all know Nubs, A Factor, and Snowman are in the house, which could mean only one thing. Odd Squad family is in full effect. Finally, when the lights go down, prepare to stare into the haunted glow of the scary, legendary, heavy metal luminaries. Mushroom Head. You know how we get down at the gathering. We stay cruising as a unit through this Juggalo movement. Man, Violent J really been wanting to rhyme in these fucking promos. Um, let's go, family. <clears throat> Gathering of Juggalos podcast tent in time. I also have on my notes here. I believe they said the Gathering of the Juggalos podcast event is going from uh, from 12 noon to 2 o'clock at the Shadowland tent. And expect me to be in that fucking tent in one way or the other. I might just be filming in that tent. I might not be performing uh, an episode or whatever the fuck. I will be in that motherfucking tent one way or the other, though. Um. Anyway. Let's talk about Odd Squad Family a little quick, a little quick, a little bit real quick. Um, Odd Squad Family played in 2019 as well. I missed them in 2019, but I saw them all over the motherfucking gathering grounds. Those dudes hung the fuck out and partied with the Juggalos. Um, so I think that's really cool. I'm down. I, I'm down to see their set, obviously, just on the fact that they were hanging with Juggalos. I want to see their shit. Um. I think they were playing early in the day or on one of the side stages, and I just straight up did not see that shit. Can't remember why we never ended up seeing them. <clears throat> um, and last but not least, Mushroom Head um, or Wish Slipknot, <laughs> which I know will piss off. Somebody. I like Mushroom Head. <laughs> I don't hate Mushroom Head. I'm <laughs> down to see um, Mushroom Head live. Uh, I don't think they played 2019. I don't think they were there. But they were playing shows with ICP around that time. Um, I think Mushroom Head was one of the ones I did speculate were going to perhaps be there on one of the past uh, Humble Among Broadcast Systems. So that's it. That's about it. Um, I think Mushroom Head. Did I say Mushroom Head? <laughs> I think I might have said Mushroom Head. <laughs> 
maybe I didn't. Super stoked for Mushroom Head, uh, Stony says. Um, me too. I'm gonna. I'm really excited to see Mushroom Head. <laughs> Honestly, though, I haven't listened to a, a super shit ton of Mushroom Head. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, people many of their songs. <clears throat> no idea. Okay. Well, we're gonna roll with Mushroom Head. Um, but yeah. Um. I don't really have that big of an opinion on Mushroom Head either way, honestly. I'm down to just see other uh, metal acts, though. Um, That's the thing, though. Like, so much music that you don't like listening to, like, when you're in the vibes oh, yeah. and it's live, you can appreciate it so much big more. Fact. Like, I could go to a jazz club and get down, but I'm not going to, like, put on Frank Sinatra on my radio. Frank Sinatra for the gathering? Ah. Bring that motherfucker back bring, from the bring, dead. Bring that corpse out. Um, <laughs> bring that corpse out. Um, I think that's all I have to say. I think that's been a humble among broadcast system for you guys. Um, I feel like there was one random thing I wanted to bring up, but I, it escapes my memory at this point. Thank you for tuning in to the Humble Among Broadcast System, as always. Thank you, Emily, for helping me out. Yeah. Staying on the chat. I think we're going to try to have Emily join me for more of these um, to help me stay on the chat a little bit better because um, there definitely was things that I would have missed if she didn't bring it to my attention. So I love you guys. Whoop, whoop. Uh, join me at Nails Fest this Saturday, Raymond, New Hampshire. Um, I believe the show starts pretty freaking early, so get there early. Um, Juggalo vibes up in that bitch. There's going to be a lot of people there. That's from one to ten. It's free, too, by the way. Come on out. It's BYOB, and it's free. It's it's a party, man. Come on come on out. Don't be afraid. We're juggalos. We don't bite. Hold. Oh, I hate, I hate myself. I hate myself for that. That was so whack. So whack. Anyway, I love you guys. Whoop, whoop. Thank you for joining in on this. <laughs> no, it's going. No, I'm still freezing, though. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to this uh, Humble Among Broadcast System uh, early afternoon stream. A lot of y'all tuned in. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah. Whoop, whoop. I love you. I feel like there's something. I don't want to say goodbye to you Beavis guys. Beavis and Butthead? Oh, <laughs> that's this Friday, isn't it? Beavis and Butthead this Friday. Um, the uh, They're going to be reacting to TikTok stuff. Oh, we did God. find that out this week. Stoney's mad about it. Stoney's mad. Um. <laughs> The, uh, I, I mean, the, and by the way, I'll tell you the reason they're probably doing that versus music videos. Those music videos have been a pain in the ass for them ever since they tried to put them on home video. It's incredibly hard for them to license these music videos. If you watch the last Humble Among Broadcast System, I talked about Beavis and Butthead allegedly having the whole library, including music videos, that because they're, they're going to have it remastered every all the old shit is going up the same day as this new movie this Friday. Um, will they include every music video? I can't see how. I honestly cannot see how they're going to have every music video. There's only one I want, and that's detachable penis. <laughs> Emily looking for detachable penis um, this Friday. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a Beavis and Butthead Friday for us. Um, I have this Friday off. So I'm doing my tire shit. Oh, so we gonna watch Beavis and Butthead at <coughs> nine o'clock in the Hawk Circle? Mm, oh, that's this Friday's gonna get lit. Oh, I can't wait for this Friday. And I don't have to work Saturday. Yep. Well, this weekend's gonna be fun. All right, you guys. I'm gonna go. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Emily, for joining me. Love you. Whoop whoop. You gonna say it? Whoop whoop. <laughs> <laughs> and broadcast.